And um, I think that podcast did pretty well. You too, man. What is... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he did the 20... Um, 5 million views. Like, wow. Like, th th this was a huge hit. Um, The interesting thing about these two is that I, 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 I knew they weren't going to... um. They weren't going to last as a duo for long for a long time. The thing is, both guys, I think, have experienced the streets, but their outlook on the streets is different. Woody's in the phase of realizing that he has an opportunity to make better of his life, and he seems kind of contrite, even though he's still kind of, he, he won't be bullied out here, and he won't be like, oh, ridiculed, like, oh, you a snitch, and people play in his face. But he's kind of contrite about what, he, what, what he's done. He's talked about God. He's talked about wanting to change he's talking about not wanting to play with the elements that allowed all the situations to happen he don't want to be like yeah i snitched on y'all y'all don't do nothing he's just saying yo listen I, I i defend myself but really i want to just do better for my life i want to move on charleston white he's made uh an empire of basically being the guy who you know he went to jail really young and you know operated in and, in and around the streets and he's made it the point to show the hypocrisy of the street but also show that the street dudes are really dudes who usually prey on the weak they have flawed mentality flawed morals um they claim they don't like snitches but they end up snitching and he uses that almost as a shield and also you know he uses it in a character type of way the reason I thought they weren't going to last as a duo, to be honest, is that I don't think Woody's playing a character. I think Woody is a liar in the sense of how he lied on the YSL stand and how he's tried to, like, you know, conceal some of the stuff he's done. But I genuinely think that Woody, who probably was doing shootings for Young Thug for, like, 500 bucks, when he's getting ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for a 20v1, yeah, he feels fortunate. He feels fortunate that you know, he got out of a situation that he was probably supposed to do a long time in jail for. I mean, as as crazy as it sounds, yeah, he did tell on Thug. But I do believe he feels sorry that Thug's in that situation, even though I do think he has a better you than me attitude. I don't think he's, like, bragging about it. I don't think he's like, yeah, nigga, I did it and what? And I think that's the the, the uh, thing that separates these two. Regardless, um, apparently they were supposed to do um an interview with say cheese and um apparently it didn't happen and from what i was told let's see from what i was told they fell out uh, what is it it said woody went live and was talking about a whole bunch of stuff ysl woody give me one second Yeah, he went live on his page. Charleston White. Where is it? Is it in the last day or maybe last two days? Sorry. Where is it? Actually, you know what? Let me just play Charleston White side first. So it, it, that's on Ch Say Cheese. Here we go. I'll play like about five or six minutes of both. It's really true. Both of them are going crazy. My used to be publishers that I fired. Yeah. Come on now. They, they, they in this ear. I got the text message. Say, man, they in my ear. I know they in your I know you got a, I know you got a broke trying to manage you, trying to play like your man, that broke. She stay down the street from my Joe Blow, driving a Honda. You got a broke managing you. You go take any kind of booking. That's why you doing shit with Shamar, Shamar, and you don't even want to do it. Make, come on, my everybody broke. So you got to do this shit. broke. Yeah, they done made me mad, Sean. They got me and I want all the smoke. And I want all to smoke my n with whoever. Give a f about no gang banging snitch. N turn uh, 20 versus one star. I don't give a f about nothing. Don't give a f about a mother. Thing got me fed up. And the don't know what she's doing. The n being misguided all this mother life still to this day. N now come crash out on me. 
Yeah, that done made me mad. Yeah, I done tried to pack fur and play fur with it. Got me f***ed up. And then Barry White, whole ass over there. Man, this nigga got me f***ed up. Homie. Everybody, and listen, they can't get no interviews if they don't use my name. I come to find out the b been using my name. I had to tell that say, b quit using my name. I don't want to do nothing with that Then Then shot up the motherfucking neighborhood. I want, I work with niggas that walk in redemption. All my niggas done kill somebody, but they walk in redemption. So until I, so once I saw the nigga was trying to redeem himself, yeah, I f*** with him. Oh, he go to church? Okay, yeah, I f*** with him. But now that kept trying to do interview with me, and now I ain't doing nothing with that nigga, my nigga. So once he done the Danger Project, then, but you couldn't have done the Danger Project without using my name. So the trying his manager trying to play like she knows something. She ain't a girl. Man, don't know what to do. He's so confused and misguided. But one thing I know, he ain't no lawyer. He turned on thug now. He'll turn on me too. The nigga turned on thug. People in his ear. So it's easy to get in his ear and do the nigga like a puppet. I don't f with niggas that cause harm to they people. Wait, who who's in his ear? His team. That I used to that used to work for me, that was telling my wife about my girlfriend. The bitch was going to go tell my wife about my, my girlfriend. Was all in my wife business. And my wife business, that's how the bitch got fired. Being in me and my wife and my girlfriend business, that's how that bitch got fired. Being in me and being in my motherfucking personal business. Chelsea, you need to pick between your wife and your girlfriend. You need to stay out of it. <laughs> you ain't even got no business speaking on. So that's why that's who it is real. Because I'm trying to show them how to get real money. I'm trying to show them when you come here, you ain't gotta give her a percentage of your say cheese TV interview, my I set it up for you, for you, and I ain't getting nothing off of it. Mm, that's real. I'm setting it up for you. And I ain't, nobody gets a percentage of this, my nigga. Come on. That's what they mad at. I'm going to show them how to get paid directly. I got the TV networks. I got the TV networks mediating between Ryan, Ryan with the sauce to, for me to talk to him to say, hey, Woody, can you stop doing so many 20 versus ones? The 20 versus two with you in Charleston surpassed so many numbers, the television networks want to turn this into a series. We already got the script wrote out. Can you tell him slow down? They won't listen to nobody because they all poor and broke. <laughs> Y'all go watch Wait, the state so TV to get, you to get the rest, baby. So do you, do you think that's the agenda to divide y'all because it brings in more revenue? For him, though, no, because I'm going to show him. Just think, his role manager and his manager both used to work for me, and they don't know a mother thing. Both of them dumb and stupid. He ain't too intelligent as mother self. Dumb, dumb, and dumber. <laughs> what is the video? Dumb, dumb, and dumber. So I'm showing him, my nigga, you used to be a gang banging nigga. I'm a game nigga. I'm smart. I'm sharp. Nigga. I can show you rather than tell you. Let me show you, my nigga. I f with you. I see you have some remorse for what you've done. I see there's some empathy. But my nigga, you can't show it in these 20 versus ones. Pull back from all the, and let's get you a documentary. Let's, right now we got your present story. The world have come to know you from being a shooter, turn snitch, turn court witness, turn YouTube star. But we don't have your backstory. How did you become a shooter? How was you raised? Where was you raised? What's the trauma? What's the abuse that caused you to become so violent where the FBI will have you listed and documented as Atlanta's top 10 most violent criminals? You still have victims on the back end, brother. Have you forgotten about that? So how can I walk with you with who I am in the community if we can't go get the backstory of who you are where we can walk with redemption with you? So that's what I was telling her team to do. 
his team. Tell him, say, homie, we need you a documentary. We need to get the backstory of who you are. Yo, yo, because somebody so sent me you, the um, so Woody's version, too. Him and his team got mad because on a platform, I identified him as I remember that. He went on No Jumper to speak against me. I had been calling him days before that interview, not knowing he was mad at me. He could have easily picked up the phone and said, bro, why you do that? Okay. I, I, I noticed his team in intervened and, and said, hey, we don't want him talking about McCannonsville. But y'all didn't intervene when he talked about Charleston. When the narrative was, you are, you have shot up people. So you get mad at me for speaking about you being a kid when it's documented who you are and what you are, only for you to turn around 10 minutes later and talk about how many nightclubs you done shot up over the weekend in Atlanta. That's it. So I finally get in touch with him when I go to Atlanta. That's how you see me and him at the aquarium. I wanted to go to the aquarium just to clear my mind, see something different, get off, you know. So I invited, come on, nigga, me and you, let's go to the aquarium. Because I wanted to talk to Little him about what the network was saying. He bring his girl, his daughter, and the big bad nigga, Barry White. Ho ass, Barry, the dick right. Okay, let me put a, I'm gonna give a little bit of what he's take. Bro, for real, for real, bro. Come on, man. Barry White. Uh, Angela, then what is you doing? You you, you caught me. We don't do these 20 verse 1. Ain't gonna weigh out, weigh out. And then you doing 20 verse 1. Man, you ain't really got nothing going on. You don't want money. You want clout, bro. Everything you do is about clout. Clout, clout. You and the rest of these boys out here about clout. Every time you with me, yes, sir, yes, sir. You taught me with respect, and I taught you with respect. But as soon as you go somewhere else, you want to be. I might be wrong in saying this, but I'm gonna keep it a bean. I think that Woody. He's getting money from this shit, but Woody's like a dirty street nigga, man. Like, I think he's fortunate for that. But even listen to his interview, I think he did with Dan's a project. Like, um, I don't think he's fully yet understood that he's like a content creator. And and this hype is going to fade. And yes, you're going to have to keep making more content to keep getting paid. And, you know, he says he doesn't want clout, which, which I agree. Like, I, I think a lot of his moves is, is, is like, we're tuning into him. Not him trying to get us to tune into him. Let's be honest, right? And, and so I, I kind of agree with them with with that. Um, Charleston White's a content creator to me. You know, like Charleston White is a content creator. I don't think Woody has passed or crossed that bridge yet. So I think that's another part of their disagreement. Disrespectful, like, come on, bro. You grown, right? You a grown man. You ain't scared of that. You don't want to come. On, come on. It's just sad, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? You claim that you you this type of person, but look look at all the stuff you doing, bro. Come on, man. Like, seriously, bro. Like, yeah, you thought you gonna come out there and be who? I moved around your whole town. No security, no weapons, no nothing. Only faith in God. I ain't understand nothing nobody talk about on no internet and in real life. If somebody wanna bring harm to me, then so let it be. But other than that, man, I'm not living my life in fear. No man. Straight up at all, bro. Like, for real, you chasing clout. You, you only got wet plug with Say TV. Who care about Say TV? No disrespect to what he got going on, but hey, man, if he gonna allow you to miss out on any of what he got going on, then that's what you call stupid. Uh, so another part of their beef is that, like, you know, you know this new lane of like these guys who used to be like killers or whatever, street dudes. You know, I, I blame Vlad for it, not blame, but but I, I blame or give credit to Vlad. Vlad started bringing these guys on, giving them in, in, insane clout, but then they start getting paid. Right. Um, for example, like you, you think about some of the guys who probably wouldn't be lit other than Vlad. Vlad pays him twenty, thirty thousand dollars an interview. What that turned out to be is these other guys, like you know, you get the Aunt Glizzies, you get the Fybj Mains, you get these other guys. They show up on a platform at first, and then people are like, oh, you're kind of funny. The, the person who does it sees the views and say, oh, shit, maybe I could keep milking this cow. Pause. Good. And, and I'm actually happy for these guys because these guys realize, all right, well, if Vlad's going to get paid, let me ask for a check because he's now using my personality and my story. It's cool. Um, and using it consistently, consistently at that. And also, you know, what people be thinking that, like, uh, you know, I interview OT7 Kwani. I think OT7 Kwani was offered money to do some interviews. He didn't do it. Why does he do it with me for free? Does it with me for free? Obviously, a musician, there's a quid 
quote pro there, right? Like, yo, act, you're going to give us promotion by putting out this interview that's hopefully entertaining and insightful. That's going to gain maybe not only our fans interested in what music we're going to put out, but maybe other fans are going to be like, oh, this, this guy got a good story. Let me go check out his music, right? So that content is to bring more interest to him, give context to the music, and give hopefully increase the demand of people who want to watch him perform or watch him um, you know, uh, uh, um, make these music videos. For these street dudes, and I'm not, I don't blame him. Like, you don't have a product to sell. Right. So if you interview on Adam's platform 20 times and you're FYBJ main and he's getting a million views every time, like he's running up the money. You're not running up the money. So at that point, you're like, well, listen, just break down the money with me and it makes sense for me. And honestly, these days, I think people like watching these guys interview. Like I just interviewed Nardo Wick. Like Nardo Wick, but boring. Niggas boring. They ain't got shit to say. Nigga don't got much drama. They ain't got nothing jumping off the page to say. Basically, go check out his music. Right? Cool. Interview is doing it's kind of slow, right? If you interview Woody, Woody's now like this street character. And that's what hip hop, like a lot of like the, the shit that's getting the views is these guys are like street characters, not even rappers. Just being able to tell a story, entertaining, got a personality you like. His personality got derived from being on the stand. Charleston White personality got derived from this character that he's he's like a, someone who tell like he's like the guy from the Boondocks. So again, that's the new wave. Um, Charleston White is trying to break out of that, and I can tell you he's trying to break out of that because Charleston White, for the most part, will charge a lot of the the newer content creators trying to get a viral video by having him on. He'll charge them ten thousand, but if he's gonna come link act, he's gonna do it for free. Right. You know, what I mean, obviously, I don't interview him all the time. If he, I'm pretty sure Say Cheese pays him because they have a great relationship and he does it like almost, he does it like Boosie, like all the time. Right. But why does he does? Why does Charles somebody do my platform for free or have? Well, it was a chance to, to, to expand his um, his audience and demographic. Right. OK. It's also like a little notch on the belt. Pause. All right, I do Axe platform. Gets me a bigger audience, a little bit more people come. Um, pause. And then I, my price could keep going up. It's like CNN, right? You're not like these guys are charging, like Charleston White at this point charging 10, 15,000 an interview. If CNN wants to do an interview with him, he's not charging them a dollar. You get what I'm saying? So Charleston White gets that thing. Little Woody is clearly fresh off the block. The nigga used to be robbing people for 20 bucks. So for him, because he doesn't understand this content creator space at the moment, He's not trying to, number one, maintain whatever clout he has, or he's not even trying to increase it. So that's why you don't see him clout chasing. Instead, he's just taking what comes to him. And for him, he's like, well, a lot of people are coming to me with money, so I'm not doing nothing for free. Obviously, again, the opposite mindset for Charleston White is he's trying to get to bigger platforms. If, you know, Piers Morgan hits him up, no charge. A YouTuber with like 5K followers or even 20K you got to pay, right? Again, he's treating it like a content creator. Woody's just not treating none of this like a content creator. So that's why they're also having a fall now because Woody's saying, why the hell would I do a free interview? Like, And and Charleston White saying, no, this is this is like a bigger play. Like, he's not getting it, though. Better than that, bro, I ain't, I ain't no type of gopher. Yeah, y'all think I'm a gopher, and I let y'all think what y'all want to think. I let y'all say what y'all want to say because I, I, I taught myself not let words get to me. But when you're going to get on here and try to bash other people that been good to you, bro, come on, man. Cut the shenanigan, bro. Come on, man. Man, you, you friend, bro. Like, at an all-time high. You mad because I ain't do an interview? You want me to go sit down with somebody? TV show. All this stuff in your benefit. You called my phone a hundred times. I'm forwarding you to the voicemail. I'm not responding back to your text message. You want to read half of the text message. Read the whole thing. I told you, bro, don't get on your platform speaking on my name. I asked you nicely, bro. You tell me I'm a killer, I'm this and that third. You can't name nobody I kill, bro. You can't name nothing about me. You come around, you ill hustle, and you try to go on these platforms and tell my story, but you just don't know I'm feeding you wrong information because I know this is what you do. Yeah, everybody think I'm stupid. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, keep thinking that. Come on, bro. Straight up, man. You grown, man. You too old for that. Get that hatred out your heart, bro. All that jealousy stuff ain't going to get you nowhere, bro. Got to remember, bro, most people got to come tell them. I don't care about leaving the line. Like I said, bro, you lying, bro. You know I'm on papers and everything. You get on the, on the internet lying to me. I'm looking for guns. What I need a gun for in Texas? What I need a gun for? I don't got no problem with nobody out there. 
what I need to walk around around looking for guns for. If I feel like I'm put, be put in, in, in harm's way, I won't even go. I don't go places I got to carry a gun. Or I feel like I got to carry Now, I, I, and I'm agree with Woody on that one. I think I think that was wrong by Charleston White. Even if Charleston White, Charleston White's a paranoid guy. You could clearly tell that, you know, he's making it look like no one wants to harm him. But no matter how gay Atlanta is, like, trust me, there got to be one nigga who's like, nah, I'm going to kill Woody. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know Atlanta is the home of the, the Batiman and, and the snitches. We all know that at this point. But there's definitely some brave niggas down there. And I'm pretty sure one of these people are like, man, I'm going to try this guy. I'm going to try to kill him. So um, Woody doesn't take that for granted. And, and, like, you know, he's always trying to be on his P's and Q's. Um, again, him just being a street nigga, wherever he goes, he feels he needs a gun. You go to another state, he's trying to get a gun. Or, and again, maybe not him, but people around him. But Charleston White went online and said, yo, Woody, Woody w w wanted to, like, you know, get a gun. He was looking Mom, for guns. Got real. She, that killer came out in his eye. Listen, but I listened. Uh, <laughs> man, people was in my room. I ran through was. her. Yeah, that's why I got to get away from him. Uh, he go crash out. He don't know how to, it, it, and he's, he's too easy to be manipulated. I know a little bit of your backstory. I think if we can get you. Now she trying to get the rental car for him. I done already sent my wife to go get the rental car yesterday morning for him. I'm over at her. So I'm trying to show him. But uh, I done led the horse to water. I can't make him drink. This is where I walk away and lead the horse. Don't get now, me personally, I do think that Charleston White shouldn't have brought none of this to the, to the airwaves. A lot of times business goes wrong. And it goes wrong behind the scenes. And on less, well, I guess, uh, yeah, yeah, let me stop because I think Woody brought it to, um, brought it on air first. He brought it on air with, with saying he don't rock with Charleston White. So let me stop. Um, but still, I don't think he should have said the whole thing about, yo, he's not, um, um, he basically said that Woody was looking for guns. Like, Woody's on probation. You know what I mean? Like, the snitching shit is whatever, but he's still on paperwork. Barry, they're riding with him. Don't forget he got victims, nigga. Y'all playing. But of course, I think everybody play. Now, I don't want to do nothing with you, my nigga. You ain't my kind of nigga. I'm too sharp. And I told that nigga, nigga, you ain't ready for the big stage. Because I told you last night and last week. Yeah. That, was, that was bad PR. And then don't y'all forget why y'all laughing and smiling with him. There's some people on the other side crying and frowned up on him. And then here come look. Here come the here it come here come the prophecy in real time. So now the prophecy is fulfilled. Y'all love the snitch, like I told y'all. Anyway, my street nigga rules. The broad and going on, but talking directly to you tonight. We got my we got personal invites. People who know me know man that nigga they they're gonna become less accessible because they don't know what they. Okay. Money off of it with a YouTube because I'm a victim for my victim compensation. Mm. All right. Anyway, they stopped it and they. Um, he basically says the guy was he brought him somewhere and the guy was trying to get guns, which is like I'm gonna keep it a being with you. I understand why he might try to be getting guns. Yes, he should have security and shit like that. But Woody knows somebody's trying to kill him. Somebody's definitely trying to kill him. Anyway, uh, hopefully they figure it out. Uh, I don't think they're gonna work together well. I think Woody is trying to get past this, and if his clout continues, he's cool with that. But I think for him, he thinks he's made the money of a lifetime and he never thought he could make. But he's not trying to, you know, boast or brag or live in that moment of, oh, you're the killer who snitched. I don't think that's what he, what he want to do. If anything, his story sounds like that of one of PTSD, redemption, understanding that yo listen yeah i did tell i i did do some selfish shit but i but niggas did selfish shit to me too just understand my side and even if you think i'm whatever snitch whatever whatever just don't disrespect me in my face because i've never gone for that i think that's his story honestly so i i don't think him and charleston so why is so woody you feel me him and charleston white recently fell out for probably, you feel me, some, some of the most dumb reasons why So Wade doesn't like 
how Charleston White is portraying him. And you know how Charleston White is, so he went off on Witty. Um, they reminded me so much of each other. I thought they'd be cool, but you know, when you're too close <laughs> to somebody or you're just like somebody, it never works well. Never, ever, ever works well. So, man, I don't know if I want to say pray for peace or pray for what. But, man, it's crazy world we live in, man.